Let us start by learning about the movements of the earth. The earth has two movements. They are the rotation and the revolution. The earth spins continuously on its axis from west to east. This is called rotation. So the earth spins continuously on its own axis. This is called as rotation. Like you can see here, the earth is spinning continuously on its axis. But the axis is not straight. It is tilted as shown here at an angle of 23.4 degree. The earth also revolves around the sun along its orbit. This is called revolution. The earth continues to rotate on its axis while revolving around the sun. So, the earth also rotates along its axis as we can see here and it rotates around the sun simultaneously. Okay, so it is rotating and it is revolving around the sun. This is an image of how the earth revolves around the sun. As you can see, it is simultaneously rotating along its axis as well. In this image, you can see clearly how the earth is rotating around its axis. So like a playing top, the earth is rotating and it is going around the sun. You cannot see the full orbit here. You can only see the half of it. Okay. Next, let us start this activity. Ask two students to stand a short distance from each other. One student represents the sun and the other represents the earth. So, this is the student that represents the sun and this one here, he represents the earth. Student who represents the uh, sun should sit on a chair. Mark an elliptical circle around the chair. So like they have shown here in arrows, they have marked a circle. So two or three feet away from the chair, you will mark an elliptical circle. Ask the student who represents the earth to spin himself and revolve around the chair along the elliptical path in anti-clockwise direction. So this student should spin himself. So like we saw, earth has an axis, so this student can, he can spin his own axis like this one and he can also revolve around the other student, okay? After watching this, discuss the following questions. Is it possible for the student representing the earth to see the student representing the sun by sitting always on the chair? So let us call him the earth and let us call the middle one the sun. So can earth always see the sun? If earth is facing this direction during spinning, then he won't be able to see the sun. If he is facing this direction, then he will be able to see the sun. So the earth may not always be able to see the sun. Okay. How many times has the student representing the earth faced the student representing the sun? So for nearly half of this path, he would be facing the sun. The other half, he would be facing the away from the sun. Okay. How many times has the student representing the earth shown his back to the student representing the sun? So like I said, half of the times he would be facing the sun. The other half, he would be facing away from the sun. When the student representing the earth shows his face to the student representing the sun, it is assumed that it is day. So, when this guy here looks at the sun, that means he is seeing daylight. It is day. When he is facing away from the sun, that means it is night time. Okay. So, what can you learn from this activity is that this is how day and night occurs. So, let us learn about day and night. 
During the Earth's rotation, one side of the Earth faces the Sun and receives light. So, during the Earth's rotation, one side is looking at the Sun and it is receiving light. This part of the Earth has day or light. Okay. The other side of the Earth does not receive light and has night or dark. So, as you can see here, in the picture, they have shown sun is on one side and it is giving light to the earth. So, whichever side of the earth is looking at the sun, that side is receiving daylight. Therefore, it is day in one side and it is night on the other side. Since the earth rotates from west to east, the sun appears to rise in the east and set in the west. So, as they have shown here, using the blue color arrows, the earth is rotating from west to east. That is why the sun appears to rise in the east and set in the west. The earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation. This is called a day. So why are there 24 hours in a day? This is because the earth takes 24 hours to complete the rotation. The earth also takes 365 days to complete one revolution. So, it actually does not take exactly 365 days. It takes 365 and a quarter days to complete one revolution. This is called a year. Okay. The day and year are a result of Earth's movements. The Earth is marvelous. As mentioned earlier, the Earth is the only planet that has life. Make a list of factors found on Earth to sustain life. So, what are the factors of planet Earth that help sustain life? Let us make a list of them. Firstly, we have learned that Earth has the ideal temperature. So, we need temperature that isn't too hot or too cold to survive. Okay. So, the Earth has ideal temperature. Next, another factor that we need to survive is liquid water. The earth has liquid water which supports life. Next, we also know that we need atmospheric gases like oxygen for survival. So, earth has an atmosphere that supports life. These are the factors on planet earth that sustain life. Next, know this. About 71% of the earth's surface is covered by water. We have already learned this in the lesson water. You can take a look at that lesson if you need. About 71% of the earth's surface is covered by water and 29% by land. The remaining is covered by land. The earth is surrounded by the atmosphere and atmosphere has oxygen which is very essential for respiration of organisms. Nitrogen and carbon dioxide which is essential for the preparation of food and nutrition of plants. Okay. The water which is essential for living beings is available on earth through the process of water cycle. How is it possible? So, water cycle is that cycle through which water undergoes changes naturally. So, you might have seen that it rains in rainy season. Where does this water go? Where does this come from? This all you can learn after you learn about the water cycle in your higher classes. Life on earth has become possible because of suitable distance between the sun and earth. Okay, so the earth is located in ideal distance between sun and earth. Ideal climate, variety of soils which supply food and water to plants, suitable environment, etc. which are present on the earth. Hence, the earth is a marvelous planet. So far, we have learned about the earth which is the third planet from the sun. So, you must remember that earth is third from the sun after Mercury and Venus. Now, 
let us learn about the other members of the solar system. Now let us learn about the other eight planets of the solar system. So you have learned that there are eight planets in the solar system in the order of their distance from the sun. The planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Earlier, Pluto was the ninth planet of the solar system. Recently, it is considered as a dwarf planet. Okay, dwarf is something small and Pluto is classified now as a dwarf planet and it is no more a planet of the solar system. Till 2005, Pluto was considered as the ninth planet. As it did not have all the characteristics of the planet, it was considered as a dwarf planet. Let us learn about each of these planets one by one. Mercury Mercury is the nearest planet to the sun. It has no water and it is the hottest planet. So, it has dry climatic conditions. It has a rocky surface, large craters and mountains. It revolves around the sun faster than any other planet. This is because the orbit of Mercury is very small. Okay, that is why it revolves very fast. It is brown in color. Let us take a look at Mercury's picture. This is planet Mercury. This is a very recent photograph that we have obtained of the planet Mercury. Okay, so you have learned that Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. However, it is a very interesting point that it is not actually the hottest planet in the solar system. Let us learn why that is. You have to remember one point. Mercury does not have an atmosphere. Atmosphere is that layer of gases that surround a planet. Mercury does not have an atmosphere. Okay. So Venus is the second planet from the sun and it is smaller than the earth. Actually, earth and Venus are very similar in size. It is the brightest planet in the solar system as seen from earth. So you can see Venus very bright than any other planet from earth sky. It is also known as morning star, silver star or evening star. So you have to know one very interesting point about Venus. That one is, this is an image of Venus. The atmosphere of Venus is such that it traps the heat you get from the sun. Okay. So it is trapping all the heat from the sun. This is why Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. Okay. Venus is the hottest planet. Also, you can see Venus very clearly from the night sky. That is why it is called as morning star, evening star or silver star. So this is Venus as seen from evening sky. Next, Mars. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun and is also known as the red planet. So it is given this name because it looks red in color. Its red soil is formed because of iron oxide. It has huge volcanic craters, giant canyons and canals. The canals are now as dry as dust. It, thus, it looks like a desert. So there are theories that water could have existed on Mars. But now the canyons are dry as dust. Thus, Mars looks like a desert. This is an image of the planet Mars. As you can see here, it looks very red. This is because of the soil of Mars, which is red in color. So, several space research organizations of the world have successfully sent robotic vehicles to Mars. Okay. So this is one of those. This is called Curiosity. Four robotic vehicles have landed on Mars for the sake of exploration. So this vehicle Curiosity is still active. 
these kind of vehicles are called as rovers r o v e r s let us learn about the planet jupiter jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and it's the largest planet in the solar system okay so jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system it is 1300 times bigger than the earth so we have already learned this jupiter is 1300 times bigger than earth it is a gaseous giant planet okay so it's a gas giant it has a great red spot it is three times bigger than the size of the earth so great red spot is a storm that is going on in jupiter and it, the size of the storm itself is three times that of the earth there are thin icy and dusty rings around this planet so jupiter has very thin rings that might not be visible in images let us take a look at jupiter again to see how big this is this is a depiction of how many earths we can fit into jupiter because it is 1300 times bigger than the earth so this is an image of the great red spot that we can see on jupiter so this spot itself is 3 times bigger than the earth so that is how big the planet jupiter is now let us move on to learn about saturn saturn is a sixth planet from the sun and the second largest planet of the solar system after jupiter it is also made up of gases it has thousands of rings of ice rocks and dust that is why it looks beautiful and attractive so saturn has rings that are made up of ice rocks and dust that is why we think it looks very beautiful and attractive so this is an image of the planet saturn you can see how it has rings around it now let us move on to uranus uranus is the seventh planet from the sun like jupiter and saturn it is made up of gases it is seen as a blue green disk it has rings which are opaque and it is covered by thick clouds so let us take a look at the planet uranus this is the planet uranus as you can see it is a beautiful sea green color and it has opaque rings around it next planet neptune it is the eighth planet from the sun its composition is similar to that of uranus its color is bright blue it is one of the coldest planet in the solar system due to its great distance from the sun okay so it's the farthest planet from the sun that is why it is very cold there let us take a look at its picture this is planet neptune as you can see it is a beautiful bright blue color already seen this is how the sun looks from planet neptune it looks very small because it is very far away this is why it is also very cold on neptune so this are the details about the eight planets of the solar system in the next lesson we will be learning about the periods of rotation and revolution of the planets i will see you all in the next module